A business card is one of the simplest ways creators can promote themselves. Business cards contain all of your essential information like who you are, what you do, and how to contact you. You can hand them out at social gatherings, or you can promote yourself by passively posting your card in a public space where permitted. I'll be using Photoshop to design my card, but you can follow along with just about any image editing application, including free ones since the principles are the same. The first thing we need to do is create a document that is the correct size. If you're using a third-party printing service, they may have a template file that they want you to use. A template will ensure that any text or graphics are not cut off when the cards are printed and trimmed to size. I'll be printing and cutting my cards at home for demonstration sake, but if you'll be printing a lot of cards, it may be less of a hassle just to have them printed professionally. Business cards come in a variety of shapes and sizes. I've seen huge cards and even teeny tiny ones. Feel free to choose a different print size or make a vertical card if you prefer. I'll go to File New, and what I want to end up with is a standard business card that is 3.5 inches wide by 2 inches tall. However, if I want my card to have color or images that go all the way to the edge of the card, I'll need to add an additional margin around the card called a bleed. The ink will bleed over the edge and then we will trim off the excess paper. Without a bleed, you may end up with prints that have a white border around them. If your background will be white, then this is not as much of a concern. I'll add a quarter of an inch to the edges. So the document will be 3.75 inches by 2.25 inches. Next I'll choose the resolution, which determines how detailed the print will be. I'd recommend 300 pixels per inch since that is standard. Since business cards have a lot of fine print, you'll want to avoid anything that is less than that, because it may make the text hard to read. For the color mode, you'll probably want to use CMYK color if you want to be sure that your color doesn't change too drastically when you print but many online printing places will just print in RGB anyway, so it may not matter if you work in RGB. I'll create the document, and now let's set some guides to represent the bleed area. I'll go to View, New Guide Layout, and uncheck the top options for columns and rows. I'll add a margin of 1 8 of an inch, or 0 0.125 inches on all sides. This will add up to a quarter inch bleed. I'll show my rulers with Control R, and now you can visualize the bleed. If you like, you can add additional guides to create a safe area. This would be a little extra space that you use as a buffer zone to ensure that your text is not cut off when you trim the card. These guides are only visible in Photoshop. They will not print. If you're starting with a template from an online printing service, they will likely have all this set up for you. Since I'm printing and cutting these myself, I'll need to be able to see the bleed guides so I know where to cut. If you aren't cutting the cards yourself, skip this step. I'll select the line tool and choose a one pixel line with a medium gray stroke and no fill. Starting from the edge of the document, I'll draw a few short lines that indicate the start and end of each guide, but I will stop short of the bleed line so I don't accidentally print the line onto the card. You can nudge the line with the arrow keys to get it aligned with the guide. Now when I print, I can use these lines to show me where to make each cut so the cards are all the same size. Let's save our card as a PSD or whatever the native format of your software is. And next, let's move on to the next step. Now that our card layout is set up, we can begin adding some graphics. While you certainly can make a card with text only, it's not going to stand out. Graphics are not only useful for making your card look flashy, it can also communicate what you're promoting. In my case, I am an artist, so I could add one of my illustrations. I can choose File Place Embedded, or drag and drop a graphic onto my composition. Despite how large it looks when I'm zoomed in and working on it, keep in mind your card will be fairly small, so I'd recommend choosing a single image that isn't too busy. For example, this painting of a moth works well because it doesn't have a border or background surrounding it. If you have a logo, you could use that in place of the graphic or in addition to it. Instead of the artwork, I'll use the logo for this channel, Creators First. I'll need to use Edit Free Transform to make it smaller. At this point, you may want to add some additional guides to help you place your graphics and text. I'll go to View New Guide Layout and add three columns with a gutter of 0.067 inches. I'll move the logo within the left column, and next, let's add a background. One thing to consider is cost when choosing colors. Black and white cards typically cost less to print, whether online or at home. If I'm printing at home, I'll want to consider the impact of my ink. This color will use a lot of blue and black to reproduce, 
So if cost is a concern, use little to no color at all. Part of my branding is the colors I use. So I'll add a new layer above the background layer and fill it with a specific blue color that I can paste as a hex value. This is a rather dark color, so I'll need to use an effect to make my logo stand out. I'll add a layer effect called stroke and add a white stroke to the outside. In some cases, it may be easier to edit your logo or artwork before you place it into the card. Now we're ready to add some text. Adding text is fairly straightforward. I'll select the horizontal type tool, select white as my foreground color, and then click approximately where I want to add text. By default, some placeholder text may be added. You can use this as an opportunity to choose a font and font size. Avoid fonts that are difficult to read. Sans serif fonts like Arial are the easiest to read and try to avoid fonts smaller than six points. I'll choose a font called Babus New that I added through Adobe Typekit, which is included with the Creative Cloud subscription. I'll add the first line of text, which will probably be your name or brand name. I'll resize it with Free Transform and center it within the right two columns. I'll hold Alt and Shift while dragging down to create a second line of text. I'll use this as a tagline to describe what I do in a few words. I create tutorials for content creators, so I'll say content creator tutorials. I won't go into detail about typography in this tutorial, but you will want to differentiate the top line from the bottom line so they are not interpreted as a single phrase. For example, I can open the properties or the character panel to make the second line smaller. You could also free transform the text to make it smaller if that's easier. But I also need to play with the spacing of the letters and change the color. So having this panel open is handy. I'll move the second line below the first line and then change the color of the second line to a specific yellow color I use in my branding. Now that the card says what I do, let's let people know who I am and how to contact me. I'll add a third line of text. I'll choose a font that is easier to read like Arial and set the font properties before inputting the text. I'll add my name, title, YouTube channel, email address, and website. You could also add a QR code if you have one. I'll format the text a bit by spreading out the lines and making my name bold. Now we can wrap up this card design by balancing out the elements in the composition. First, it may help to put a temporary border around the bleed area so you can see how it will look trimmed. To do that, just select the background layer and add a stroke effect on the inside. This is measured in pixels, so just get it close. In this case, 38 pixels works. Next, I'll hide the guides with control semicolon so I can get a better idea of how the text and logo are balanced visually. You can add more guides if you like to help align things. Simply drag from the ruler to add a guide or drag it back to remove it. I'll add about an eighth of an inch safe zone inside the card so that I can better visualize the edges. Try not to have too much wasted space, but don't crowd the composition. Try to keep everything centered as a whole with about equal spacing around all sides. If the text becomes misaligned, you can use the alignment commands in the properties bar to fix that. Grouping the text together can also help keep things aligned as well. When you drag objects around, you may also see pink guides that appear showing you the centers of the canvas. These can be enabled or disabled under View Show Smart Guides. I'll move the logo and text in toward the center gutter and just try to get it looking good by eye. Zooming out to approximate the actual print size can be helpful too. Hold a real card up to your screen to help you size it. If anything is difficult to read, adjust the font. Spend a few minutes looking for typos too. We don't want to waste any money printing the wrong information. In this tutorial, I'm only going to focus on a single-sided card, but you could duplicate this composition and use it to make a back side as well. You may need to flip the image 180 degrees for the back to print correctly. Double-sided printing can be difficult at home, so I won't be attempting that. Let's save the final copy of your cards, and then we can move on to printing. I'll want to hide any guide layers or effects that I don't want to print. For instance, the white border that simulates the bleed. I do want to keep the crop lines I added so I know where to cut. If you're using an online template, be sure to follow whatever instructions are provided. You need not follow this next step if you're printing online, but if you're printing at home, then we'll need to add multiple cards to a single page. Save your composition as you want it to appear when printing. Then we'll create a new document that is the same size as the paper you'll be printing onto. Most likely this will be eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall at 300 PPI. 
choose File Place Embedded, and choose your card design. At this point, you may just want to print a proof or a test print of this single card to ensure it looks correct before you commit to using a lot of ink. If you're printing online, you may want to create a similar proof to get a feel for how the image will look printed. If you're ready to mass produce the card, create a 1 8 inch guide on all sides to account for the area that it's not printable. Then place the card in the top left and hold Alt to duplicate it. If snapping to smart guides is enabled, you will be able to keep the cards aligned more easily. Once you have two cards, select and duplicate them to create four and so on until you have filled the page. You should be able to fit eight cards per page. Save as to save this document, but don't save over your original card design. Now you can go to File Print and print your cards. I recommend using cardstock paper, and be sure to check your print settings so that you're not printing in black and white or draft quality unless you want to. Because I don't want to waste a lot of ink for this demonstration, I'm going to adjust the design to remove the color before I print. If this is your first time cutting cards, you may want to do a practice run like this. After printing a single page of cards, I'll trim them to be the same size using a paper cutter like this. You can probably find one of these at a thrift store for very cheap. Simply align the crop lines on the paper with the edge of the blade and cut. If you don't get the paper aligned just right, your cards will not be uniform. So this is why I recommend saving yourself the hassle and just have your cards printed online. It's okay if your cards are a tiny bit off because no one will notice. As you can see, I've created my own business cards that I can use to promote my brand. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see more content creator videos like this, subscribe to this channel and enable notifications. Thanks for watching and stay creative.